So now let's take a look at one of my favorite overlays to use for trading, Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands can measure volatility with bands placed both above and below the selected moving average. On a day chart, the middle band, which is usually shown as a dotted line, represents the 20 day SMA or simple moving average. The two outer bands represent two standard deviations of 20 and two. If you wanted to use Bollinger Bands for longer term trading or investing, you could simply change the time frame and make the middle band the 20 week average instead of the 20 day average for example. Bollinger Bands are one of my favorite overlays to use for trading and can show you when a stock is either overpriced or oversold. The stock is considered overpriced near the top of the band and oversold near the bottom of the band. But just because the stock or other asset is overbought or oversold and touches a band, doesn't necessarily mean it will change direction at that moment. A stock can remain overbought or oversold for extended periods of time, especially in times of high volatility. Other indicators should be used as well to confirm a reversal. When the price continues to follow an upper or lower band, this is called walking the bands. You can also get great insight into the current volatility of an asset with Bollinger Bands. The more squeezed or closer together the top and bottom bands are, the less volatile the price movement will be. The more spread out the bands are, the more volatility you should expect. You can use the bands to create a trading range in order to find good entry and exit points when trading. This can be done in multiple different ways, such as the buy when the price touches the lower Bollinger Band, and exit when the price touches the moving average at the center of the bands if an asset is in a downtrend. Or you could buy when the price touches the middle band and sell at the upper band in uptrends. Or you could use both the top and the lower bands as your trading channel and sell when the price breaks above the upper Bollinger Band and buy when the price falls below the lower Bollinger Band. So now let's head over to trading view and take a look at how to apply and use Bollinger Bands on a candlestick chart. Once you're on the trading view website, look at the ticker search box and search for the stock you're looking for. You can either type in the stock symbol or the stock name. I think I'll use CVS for this example. From the drop down menu, let's select CVS. You may first be taken to a line chart that isn't very good for technical analysis. So to get to our candlestick chart, let's look at the top right of the chart and click on interactive chart. So here's our candlestick chart for CVS. Let me go ahead and remove the indicators and overlays I was using earlier. There we go. So I wanted to take a look at how to use Bollinger Bands, which are probably my favorite overlay to use for technical trading. So to get started, let's go ahead and add some Bollinger Bands to our chart. You want to look up at the top menu and click on the Indicators tab. From here, I'm simply going to go to the search box and search for Bollinger Bands. You'll see multiple options to choose from, but I'm just going to click the first one here. So after you select your overlay, you can go ahead and close the box. And now we have Bollinger Bands added to our CVS candlestick chart. You can see our middle band, which is represented as a red line on trading view, and the outer bands on each side of the middle band. The further apart the outer bands are from the middle band, the more volatile the stock movement will be. There are multiple strategies you can use with Bollinger Bands. One easy method is to simply purchase when the price touches the bottom band, and sell when the price touches the top band. But I wanted to show you another method that I like to use personally when trading. This method involves using the middle band as well. When the price trades above the middle line, it's typically in an uptrend. But when it trades below the middle line, it's typically in a downtrend. The middle Bollinger Band can act both as a resistance and a support level. So in order to purchase uptrends and sell on downtrends, I will wait till the stock price closes three times above the middle Bollinger Band to purchase and three times below the middle Bollinger Band to sell. So let's say you purchased around the end of November here when the price closed three times above the middle Bollinger Band. You would have got in around $71. The price then went up and came back down to the middle Bollinger Band, but didn't close below it three times. The price touched the middle Bollinger Band multiple times, but the middle band acted as a strong support. Until we get a sell signal, we simply ride the uptrend all the way up. The price peaked around January, then the price fell below the middle Bollinger Band three times in a row. This would have given us an exit point around $77 and a good 9% gain. The price then continued to fall and then closed two times above the middle Bollinger Band here, but not three times. Sticking to the strategy would have saved us from making a bad entry point. Our next entry point would have been around here in April. The price did go up after our buy signal, 
but then had a massive fall. If we stuck to the strategy, we would have gotten out around $63. We got in around $64, so this actually resulted in a small loss. Not all trades will be profitable, but having a strategy will definitely help you reduce your risk. Without a strategy, the losses could have been much worse. The goal for trading is to simply win more than you lose and to widen that gap over time. I'll see you in the next video.